Hey, yeah, what's up? This disciple Marcello Kearns reigned back up in this anti-Illuminati all day, anti-America all day, anti-Freemason all day, anti-gang stalkers all day. So basically, this message is going to be about the scripture, you shall know them by their fruit. Know them by their fruit. And what about new Christians with no fruit? See, what I'm what I'm going to show you is, is that there's many people that will try to take your identity as a Christian. They'll try to take your identity as a Christian because they feel they don't see any fruit. Or they may feel that you're displaying something that is outside of displaying fruit. Okay. But my first, uh, argument as far as taking someone's identity based on fruit or a lack of fruit or b taking someone's identity based on a lack of fruit. What about new Christians who haven't formed fruit? Do they not still have their identity in Christ as a Christian? So I'm just making a point that technically speaking, someone can be a Christian without having fruit or displaying fruit. That's the bottom line. That's the seven hour. That's what we're trying to clarify. Is it is it technically possible? Because what we have is people that will say, they'll try to go by and say, we don't see no fruit, and they try to snatch your whole identity. Well, new Christians don't have any fruit, hardly. Can you snatch their identity? I'm just being technical right now. I'm just being technical because I want to clarify that there's a possibility that the possibility is actual that someone can be a Christian that just came to God, that is the only way to heaven, but do not have the mature fruit of the spirit. So I'm just clarifying that they can still be on their way to heaven. They can still be a Christian although they have not matured their fruit. And now I can get a star slot. Boom, out. Because many people have tried to sit back and say, well, we don't see any fruit. You got the fruit inspectors out here now. But the Bible says a just man should fall seven times and rise again. Now, when he falls, is it, does he, does it, it's safe to say he lacks some type of fruit, right? It says a just man falls seven times and rises up again. So if he falls, it's probably a lack, it's probably where fruit was not displayed or put into activity, right or wrong. Whether he have, he, he, he didn't have long suffering or patience, faith. He lacks something concerning the fruit of the spirit for the just man to fall. Well, how's he going to fall when he got all the fruit of the spirit? That's the seventh hour. How's he going to fall when he got all the fruit of the spirit on display and in activity? Obviously, some of the fruit of the spirit was not in activity. Well, if he had all the spirit, a fruit of the spirit in activity, then why would he fall? But the Bible still esteems, hear this part, the Bible still esteems him as a just man, which is a Christian. The Bible still, even though he falls, he still, he still has his identity in Christ Jesus. And that's what I'm trying to clarify to you today is that when you fall, don't let these Americans try to take your identity because the Bible says a just man falls seven times and rises up again. He still has his identity as a just man. That's a seven hour. He still have his identity as a just man. It says a just man. This is, this is, it will fall. This describes his path. A just man will fall seven times and rise up again. That's what the Bible says. So that's a just man. Not, a, not what you want to call him. Not what you, you want to say hypocrite. You want to say all this other stuff. 
the Bible says a just man will fall seven times. Now think about seven times. One time, boom, he fall. Everybody talking. You fall twice, boom. Everybody call him a hypocrite. Three times, boom. Now they laughing. Four times, boom. Now they just, just done gave up. And he falls five, three more times. Boom, five times. Boom, six times. Boom, seven times. And in God's eyes, he still has his identity. He or she still has their identity in Christ Jesus being a still a just man. And this is why, folks, it is a personal relationship with God, not a public relationship with God. Hallelujah. That's a seventh hour. Yeah, it's not a it's not a per, it's a it's not a public relationship with God. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because these people would give on the, the, the show will be over as soon as you fail. As soon as you fall one time, the show's over. I promise you that. I know how these Americans operate. Fall one time and the show's over. Fall some kind of way. I don't care who it is. It could be any of your famous people. Let them fall the wrong way. Let them say something about the black community and white community that they don't like. Let, let them say something out of pocket. Then the whole show be gone. And it's just you and God. So what you know what you do? You don't even focus on that. You don't even focus on the show. You don't focus on none of that. You focus on doing what God got you to do, fighting this spiritual warfare here in America against the gang stalkers, fighting against the, the powers that be, and keep your and keeping your nose clean to the best of your your human possible ability. With with, with the Holy Ghost giving you strength to get through it all. Because see, what I'm trying to clarify for these, these big, these big, these big uh, old school, big old cats in the ministry, right? These big, these big cats in the ministry that sit back and think they can clarify everybody and think they know who everybody is. The Bible says a just man falls seven times and rises up again. See, as soon as you see me falling, you say, where's the fruit of the spirit? But I, but, so you try, so when you don't see, when you see, when you don't see me, uh, when you don't see me displaying the fruit of the spirit, this is what you do. You sit back and say, well, that ain't no Christian. How many times have people sit back and seen somebody fall and say they wasn't a Christian. The Bible says a just man falls seven times. And guess what? When he's doing that falling, all these undiscerning people, all these so-called uh, righteous people will say that's not a Christian. But the Bible makes it very clear. That's why I believe in the Bible, because it's real. It makes it very clear. A just man falls seven times and rise up again. He he falls seven times. So so by the time he falls seven times, guess what? All the whole people, all these people who know you trying to take your identity as a Christian. But you still are esteemed as a just man before God. That's why it's a personal relationship with God. Don't worry about don't worry about these people. Don't worry about the crowd. Because they all here, these, these, I can guarantee you half of these Americans are here for entertainment purposes. And it's going to be a, it's going to be a very good show that they're going to see by the time this ends. It's going to be a very good show. They already got COVID-19. Oh, that's, that's for all the gang stalking they've been doing. It's all working out. It's all working out. We saw what we, we, we bring in warfare. We still bring in warfare every day, all times, every day. It's a continuous 24-7 warfare, so, you know, it's going down like it needs to go down for us. Yeah, but don't let nobody, uh, even if you listen, you might not listen. The Bible says a just man falls seven times. Don't let nobody sit up and try to take your identity, man, because you got these fruit inspectors out here now. 
You got these fruit inspectors. It says you shall know them. This means you should be able to identify them, but you're not able to take their identity. You shall be able to identify by the fruit, but you can't take the tree. So in other words, if you don't see no fruit, you can't say it ain't an apple tree. That's a seven aisle. Boom. If you don't see no oranges, you can't say it ain't an orange tree, can you? It's still an orange tree. You just don't see no fruit. You can't say it ain't a strawberry patch just because you don't see no strawberries. It still is a strawberry patch. Okay? You just don't see no strawberries. But that does not give you the right to say that's not a strawberry patch. That doesn't give you the right to say that's not a plum tree. It doesn't give you a right to say that's not a nectarine tree. Who are you to say that's not a nectarine tree when it obviously is? So although many people may not show you fruit per se, you need to take a look closer and see if you see a tree. Boom, ow. See if you see a tree. See if you see a tree. Because you took it a little too far, didn't you? You shall know them by their fruit. You took that a little too far, didn't you? Don't you think? Well, you're trying to take somebody's whole identity. And the Bible also says, doesn't it say he's married to the backslider? Doesn't the Bible say God is married? So he's married to the backslider regardless. That's a seven hour. <laughs> he's married to the backslider regardless. Jesus Christ is married to the backslider regardless of your opinion and your fruit inspections. That's why you got to be very careful who, who you put your mouth on because Jesus Christ is still married to the backslider. Boy, that's good right there. You ain't heard that good kind of preaching. You, how, uh, you ain't heard preaching like that in about 20 years, have you? Jesus Christ is still married to the backslider. Why y'all got these fruit inspectors who ain't no different to me to me than hood politicians. And I'm going to do a message on that. All these hood politicians, they play these jailhouse games of inspecting people and playing games and testing people and listening to what they say and watching them in these prison like ways. And you and you and you and you call yourself inspecting fruit. But really, you just another hood politician. Boom. You just another hood politician using street uh, strategies to try to see who's a Christian or who are you and, or if you can disqualify a Christian. And in actuality, they still married to the backslider either way it goes. I mean, they still met God still married to the backslider either way it goes. Either way it goes. He's still married to the backslider either way it goes. Boom. So what you say in that case, how can you take the identity of, of someone who is married to Jesus? Jesus still married to him. So how are you going to take the identity? Who are you to take it? You're no one to take it. And that's why you got to understand the scriptures for what it is. It's telling you. This is how you will in this is the indication. The fruits will be an indication of okay, this is a, the, the right tree. This that's what that that's that's what you need to take from that. That's what you need to understand from that. It's showing you that the fruit of the spirit, you shall know them by their fruit, right? That's saying you should be able to identify somebody and leave it at that. Leave it at that. That's all it's saying. That's how you'll be able to identify someone that's like you, someone that's a Christian. OK, that's a Christian. But it doesn't say go deeper and try to take the identity if you don't see that. If you don't see the fruit, it doesn't give you right to take the identity when Jesus is married to the backslider. And the Bible says a just man falls seven times, which means he if he falls, he is not putting some fruit into activity. I'm pretty sure about that. I'm pretty sure if a just man falls seven times, 
Somewhere in those falls is a lack of activity of fruit of the spirit. And that's where you Americans will try to take his identity as a Christian. That's why you got to be very careful because the judgment that you put out, the judgment that you put out on people, it can, it can come back double fold and you sitting up wondering how did, how did you start back drinking? How did you start back doing what you was doing? Because you created that situation through your judgment. You went up and judged people and talking about, well, I wouldn't be, I would have never did that. I would never be doing no stuff like that. Oh, you sure about that? Maybe you ain't on the level that person is where they dealing with the devil and the satanic kingdom. Maybe you ain't going through that. So maybe you need to keep being the fanatic that you are for that person and, and keep spectating and keep your mouth closed. Because until, you know one thing I don't do? Because until you is on that person level, how can you say what you're going to do? You know one thing I don't do? I don't judge preachers anymore. I don't judge preachers anymore. You don't know what them preachers going through. Helping the children, helping the families, helping the community, helping. You don't have no idea what kind of spiritual warfare they go through. And here's some of you Christians sitting around farting, drinking milk and cookies, making these YouTube videos about these preachers. And you don't, you ain't on that level at all to know what they even going through. Y'all still ju judging Jimmy Swagger and you ain't never been on Jimmy Swagger level, have you? You still judging Jimmy Swagger. When he repented, at least he repented in front of everybody. You still judging. You still judging. I don't judge preachers because you know what? Since I rose up to a higher level of spiritual warfare, you, I am aware that the congregation and these Christians that's not going to the next level and they walking, they're not ministering, they're not out here preaching. I am convinced that you do not deal with the same level of warfare and spiritual warfare that these preachers deal with. This is one person helping hundreds of people use spiritual common sense. One person helping hundreds of people, even thousands, even millions in some cases, <clears throat> use spiritual common sense. You don't think the devil is, is, is turning up the heat. You don't think he's turning up the heat. That's spiritual common sense, man. And so when you realize that instead of judging like the world do, like these American movies, they show the backslidden preacher, like the movie Friday, it showed uh, it showed the preacher and um, Bernie Mac was the preacher, showed him uh, trying to have sex with Miss Parker, trying to smoke weed with the homies. Right. This is how this is how American culture sees the preachers. Let's keep it 100. Have you ever seen a good standing in a lot of movies with other good standing preacher in the, in the culture? Now, it's always the one that's backslidden and slipping. Right. The ones you call a hypocrite. And Friday, the movie Friday with Ice Cube and, and Chris Tucker. Bernie Mac played the backslidden preacher. The hypocritical preacher. Having sex with Miss Parker while she was married, smoking weed with the homies, or asking to smoke weed with the homies. Right? But but let's keep it 100. You don't know what you don't know what that preacher going through. You, you don't know what level got him out there looking for a woman and looking for weed. You don't know, do you? So in all actuality, you, you, you displayed that you're an idiot unaware of higher levels of spiritual warfare. 
Well, the higher levels of spiritual warfare, you're going to be out here with temptations, with higher levels of temptation. You ain't going to have the same temptation levels as the congregation. The, the preacher, the devil wants knocked off. So he's sending everything. He's sending women. He's sending weed. What you want? Alcohol? The devil, is, his kingdom is just whatever you want. What you want, man? I just want you to stop. I just want you to stop preaching. I just want you to stop what you're doing. What you want? What you want? What, what you want so I can stop you? What you want so I can shut you up and make you a hypocrite? And you don't have no earthly idea because you the fans. You the spectators, the fans, and you have no idea on the spiritual warfare levels that we go through. All that telepathy stuff that you think you're doing. On top of that, we still deal with the satanic kingdom. That's why we was ready for you. Oh, we was ready for you because we already deal with real spirits and principalities anyway. Boom. So even if you did leave, we still got to deal with the satanic kingdom. Oh, yeah, listen, this is a, this is this war is eternal, bro. Well, it's not eternal. Excuse me. It's it go it's going to go to the end of the world and Satan is cast into the lake of fire. This is going to go on for a while, buddy. This going to go on for a while. So it doesn't matter if they was if they was not gang stalking you anyway, you're gonna have to deal with the satanic kingdom anyway. So whatever, so it doesn't matter. It's whatever anyway. See, that's our mentality. See, by the time you came along, God already dealt, God already used the laboring that we had with principalities and demonic spirits. He already used that laboring to skill us for you. We've been ready for you. See, unlike Neo in the Matrix, we already was prepared. So once we met the enemy, we was already ready. We didn't we didn't need uh we didn't need a leader to teach Neo Morpheus. We didn't need a Morpheus. If anything, Jesus Christ was our Morpheus. And we've already been ready for you. So all the little stuff you're doing, that's why I ain't shaking in my boots. Do it look like I'm shaking in my boots? Because we already dealt with spiritual principalities and demonic spirits before you came along. And in fact, some of you are not as high ranking as those spirits are. You think you are. It's all in your head and what your family told you. Yeah, you're a powerful witch. Sitting around eating chicken. You're a powerful witch. How about now? How about now? Oh, you just spectating. That's how you save your face now. That's how you're trying to preserve your rank. Talking, talking, talking in hood politics and street politics. <laughs> we don't reduce you down to chicken eating hood politicians. Sitting around yapping and yapping and yapping and yapping, but doing nothing. That's what we reduce the that's what we reduce the enemy down to. Look at them for what they are. Sitting around yapping and yapping and we doing everything. They think they playing with us, but we fighting the satanic kingdom outside of their little group. That's why the warfare and the attacks are more bigger than them. You see that? Our attacks is bigger than their group, right? The attacks that we're le- releasing is bigger than them, right? You have to admit that. So that means we're fighting something else. Something else that was there before you. And something else that will be there after you. So this war for us don't stop. It don't stop. And we accept that. We can make you leave. We can defeat you. But the war don't stop. It gets better. We triumph. We become victorious. But the war doesn't stop. Okay? So all the little mind reading you're doing through the walls that you don't think I hear, all that little whack stuff you got, when your family thought told you you were someone special, 
You ain't no one special over here. You ain't, you're nobody over here. See, they got you convinced. Your family and the world got you convinced you something spiritual special. <laughs> you my little Debbie Kate. <laughs> you my little Debbie Kate. How about now? I told you, man. We can make it real fun and interesting for you if that's what you want. Okay? But we need we need to check these. We also need to check these these Christians out here in the flesh thinking you fruit inspected. Out here with a whole American, a whole sin out here fruit inspected. And the other scripture you use is the test to see if the spirit is of God. Okay, see, if you read the full passage of that, it says test to see if a spirit is of God by if they believe that Jesus Christ literally came in the flesh. That's how you test and see if a spirit is of God. Not the little rinky-dink hood politic, chicken-eating politic test you want to do. Not that. Not that jailhouse, jailhouse testing y'all be doing. Like, I don't know no better. I've been around jailhouse people. I've been around prisoners. I know all about them psychological tests and all them games y'all play. And all of it is influenced. Sadly to say, even all these Americans, even Christians are using it. All of that is influenced by the jailhouse. That's all it is. I can smell it a mile away. They the ones that put pressure on you. They the ones that watch your every move. That all comes from prison mentality. That's all it is. Something I, I kind of despise. I don't like prison mentality. I, I like street mentality more. Not saying I choose street mentality. Because prison mentality, and I'm going to do a video about this, prison mentality is a little more thorough. A prison mentality, they'll let a gang of people, and it'll be two dudes that want to fight. In prison, nobody is jumping into that fight. That's the difference between the streets and prison. You can't, you can't make no mistakes like that. Because then you dead. In prison, and you ain't got nowhere to run. See, in the streets, you can run. You can do corny stuff and run somewhere. Skip town. You can go run and skip town. In prison, you got to be thorough, more thorough, because you ain't got nowhere to go. If you make a mistake, you you the whole community, the prison community could be on your head. Now they smell weakness and they smell blood. So it produces more, the prison produces more thorough people, I have to admit. But the politics in itself and how it's formatted, I don't like. Okay? But when it comes to politics like, like what I just said, street, street guys and sit up and jump somebody. Now in prison, it could be gangs on both sides. Whoever wants smoke with each other, those two are the ones that are going to get it in. Those are two that's going to get it in and ain't nobody jumping in it. And if that person jumped in it, they getting, they getting, they getting, they getting, who knows what's going to happen to them later. Because that wasn't your issue. You don't know what that issue was. That's what I, that's the difference between street thorough and prince and prison thorough. You don't have no opportunity to do that in prison. If, if they see two meet people fighting, ain't nobody jumping in it unless other people jump in it and then everybody go in. That's how I go. But if it's two dudes that's fighting, nobody's jumping in there. It don't matter how bad it gets. It doesn't matter how bad it gets. And that teaches people a lesson to stop running around here like you thorough and like you gangster, you know, and you don't even practice those principles. You should be in jail because you don't practice real principles anyway. We need you out the way. That's how I feel. We need wanksters out the way. 
Cause you don't, cause I go, I don't go by your attitude. I don't, go, I don't go by your guns you have. I go by your principles and your actions, and that's gonna tell me everything I need to know. But half of y'all Christians, and you halfway don't understand that they got you up in those ghetto hood politics. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. You using the same, the same test style. You don't think I've been around no prisoners? What you thought I was born yesterday? I know you would like to think because of the state that I'm in right now that I ain't been around nothing. Because God has, has blessed me to become more like Jesus. I'm, I'm more like Jesus now. And you look at that. See, a person is not discerning. What you do is you look and think I've been like this all my life. That's how I know you don't know you don't know the works of God. Now nah, you don't know the works of God. Because you can't tell when somebody has changed. You, you can't still see that you can't play with that person. Because you were lame. You were lame and you can't see that you still can't play with that person. But you can see that they changed. Oh yeah, you can't play with me. Uh, I, I keep weapons. I done got locked. The last time I got locked up for a weapon was October 31st. I got to let that charge fall off. I got to let that charge fall off. That means right now, I can't do any crimes. Right now. That's why I'm at with mine. So, I'm under surveillance by the criminal system right now. Because I can't, technically speaking, I can't do anything else. Or I'm going to get all what I, all the stuff that, they, that, I've, all, that I've been, uh, the other stuff that I got going. That's going to all be together. And that, so that shows my mentality. I don't have nothing to prove. But don't play with me. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't listen, man. You've been watching too much rap. You've been listening to too, too, much, too many videos and listening to rap and listening to videos. You've been doing too much of that. Like Tupac said, you've been watching too many movies. <laughs> you've been watching way too many movies. That's what's wrong with them. They think they got some game going on. And I guarantee you at least 5 to 30% of that mentality is because of some movie they don't watch. Half of these people emulate rappers. It wouldn't be far-fetched. If they emulate rappers, I'm pretty sure they emulate movies. Safe to say, right? Some people emulate rappers. Some people emulate movies. Boom, ow. But unfortunately, buddy, we about to shut your movie down. We, sh we about to shut down the production on your movie, buddy. That's a wrap. <laughs> cut. <laughs> hey, cut. That's why it's looking like it's looking. You don't want to play no games with me, man. Listen, man, I proved myself, bro, already. All you're doing is going through the motions. Y'all going through the motions. We proved ourselves, man. We high ranking. We high ranking over here. I'm high ranking over here. All you got is telepathy and psychic power and witchcraft that ain't manifesting nothing. Everything you try to take from me, we all, I get it back. Everything you try to take from me, I get it back. And so. Listen, man, it's, 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 listen, it's all about manifestation, man. We ain't playing no psychological karate anymore. You playing psychological karate, psychological kung fu, kung fu fighting. See, that's what's wrong with you. You think you're a master. You ain't no master. If you was a master, you wouldn't be in this situation. You wouldn't be in this situation. Masters are not in this situation. See, I'm fighting kingdoms that you don't know about. I'm fighting spiritual principalities that you don't know about. So my situation is 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 a war situation. I'm I'm a I'm a soldier down in the trenches fighting these real wars. Now what you doing? That's what I'm saying. That's the difference between me and you. I can explain mine, you can't explain yours. Cuz if you are in the trenches against me, what have you manifested? What have this whole building that they put together manifested? Yeah, you don't think I know they put this building together? All these people, come on. This is this is a setup. I'm already aware of it. And it's whack. And I've been here almost two years. 
and, and I've danced circles around y'all, ran circles around y'all, and I'm still manifesting out in the world through Christ Jesus. It's still getting done. I'm manifesting right here in your face. And what have you been able to do? Oh, make me have arguments. That's about it, bro. And I'm still here. What you thought I was going to, hey, you thought I was going to commit suicide? I'm a Christian, man. You think I'm going to commit suicide? Look like you're in trouble, don't it? Hey, look like you're in trouble, don't it? Yeah, you mess with a real prophet of God. Uh huh. I, I, I'm seasoned. I can, I can, I can counsel anybody. All the people that don't throw it away in this country, you know, you might have dipped and dabbed in, in, in all different type of stuff, and now they don't threw your credibility away. I can counsel people like that. You can't, because as soon as you don't see no fruit, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna throw them away like the other people did. Well, we don't see, we don't see the fruit of the Lord. You act like, <laughs> hey, I swear, people act like you at the dentist's office, don't you? They act like they're at the dentist's office. We don't see no fruit. Are you at the dentist's office? Putting braces on people? <laughs> pulling, pulling cavities out? Pulling wisdom teeth out? Doing root canals? That's what y'all doing? The bottom line is, man, the Bible says a just man falls seven times, and I guarantee you when he's falling... Somewhere along the line, he's not displaying fruit or, or fruit or an activity. And see, here's the other part of it. Some some of y'all are in behavioral clubs here in America. That's the only way to put it. You're in a behavioral club where your preacher teaches you that to be a Christian, you must be on you to be really qualified as a Christian. You got to be on your best behavior. You got to be on your best behavior. Okay, let's just let me give you let me give you a good uh, uh, illustration from the Word of God. Jesus Christ in the temple, where he tore up the whole temple because of the merchants. He tore up the whole temple, took a whip, and drove them out of the temple. He said, "My Father's house will be a house of prayer." Right. So you think you're playing karate against me, man, but you can't see me face to face. Man, come on, man. That's a joke. And while you at it, I'm tearing down your playground because you got 43 states of child marriage. So it's just a matter of time that they get your playground. Just keep that in mind. That's a seven hour. I'm going to get your playground. For all you witches and warlocks, I'm going to get your playground. Well, we're going to take the whole thing down. That's going to get to the bottom of the matter, ain't it? That's going to get to the crust of the matter, ain't it? <laughs> that's gonna get you crusty, crusty butts off the. That's gonna get you crusty butts off the streets, huh? You crusty butt women off the street. That's gonna get to the crust of the matter, huh? Of getting your crusty butt off the streets. Oh, dusty crusty witches. Like I don't know no better, man. I can see, I can see a witch a mile away now. I can hear you in the walls. You ain't, you a nobody. I just want you to keep that in mind. You're going to burn in hell one day. The Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. That's what the Bible says. Suffer not a witch to live. Okay? Now, the next, now with Jesus being in the temple, Jesus being in the temple, Driving out the people, driving out the merchants with a whip. You know what you Christians would have did today? If I came in there tearing up a church saying people selling, hustling in the church, in the lobby of the sanctuary. If I see somebody hustling out there like that, you know what you would do? You would call the police. That's what you would do. You would call the police on me. And you, and you know what you would be saying behind my back? Don't let that boy in here again. He done told his church up. Talking about my father's house will be a house of prayer. He done told his church up. He ain't got no fruit of the spirit. Right or wrong? Right or wrong? But see, that's where you get confused. Because you in a behavioral club. 
You think Jesus was worrying about how he, his expressions was when he was doing that? You think he cares more about your opinion of his behavior than handling straightening out his father's house? So that's when you get goofy because the emotion is based on him taking care of his father's house. That's what it's based on. That's what it's based on. So see, but you, but you, but certain Christians, you can't even have a frown on your face. Why are you frowning? You a Christian, you should be smiling. Well, maybe this is my warfare face. Maybe this is my warfare face. Maybe this is this is my maybe this is my warfare face. I thought I'm causing some, some demonic bodies. I thought I'm causing some demonic bodies. Maybe this is my warfare face. See, so you live in a behavioral club kind of world where everybody got to be on their best behavior. Jesus wasn't on his best behavior when, according to you, according to your standard and way of thinking, when he was in the temple. Not according to how you judge people. You ain't going to say Jesus was wrong in that situation, but you'll say everybody else was. So it still applies. It still applies that Jesus behavior where he was tearing up the temple, driving them out. You would have looked at that as a lack of fruit of the spirit, bottom line. But if I tell you Jesus did it, oh, now you'll, you get that religious demon. Oh, well, Jesus, he was right. Now you got a religious demon. Where you said you OK stuff, but you really but, but, but really. You don't really, but you don't really feel that way. You know how we know? Because listen, when, when, when other people act like Jesus, you got a problem with it. Ooh, boy, that's a seven hour. Ooh, boy, that's good. You got a religious demon to where you, long as Jesus is saying it in the Bible, saying red. Oh yeah, you agree with that. Yeah, you got that religious demon. Yeah, yeah, Jesus said that. Now let a person live out the, 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 the character of Jesus Talking about homosexuality and lesbianism. Oh, that person don't know what they doing. You got to love people into the kingdom. You got to love people into the kingdom. They don't know what they doing. Uh huh. That's how you talk. They don't. They ain't wise about how they win souls. Uh huh. Uh huh. And so, so what happens is. People are really, you want to talk about fruit? Let's talk about people being really like Jesus. And some of you American Christians can't handle it. Oh, yeah, boy, that's good. That's real good. Oh, yeah, you talk about the fruit of the spirit because, see, that works to the benefit. That's convenient for your little behavioral club that you got going on. That's, 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 that's how you, that's part of your denomination. <laughs> for you to talk about being on your best behavior in the fruit of the spirit. But then when I talk to you and show you the real nature of Jesus Christ and if it was somebody else doing that, you wouldn't be good with that. I promise you wouldn't be. If I came up Tanner's church up because merchants are hustling in the sanctuary lobby, I guarantee you, you're going to say, you're going to say, call the police. This man has lost his mind up in this church. That's what you're going to say. But that's what Jesus did. And he, and that's what makes us a Christian, is Jesus. Christian means Christ-like. You're like Christ. So I can show you how to live this, man. You just got to be willing to put in the work. You can't be no lazy Christian. And you might judge me on my work ethic out here in this world, but I'll tell you one thing. I ain't no lazy Christian. I am not no lazy Christian. For all you people that use the scripture, if you don't work, you don't eat. Do you ask a homeless person that? That's a seventh hour. 
Hey, when you run a when you run when you run a church kitchen, when you run a church ki- uh, a soup kitchen out your church, do you ask these homeless people? Tell these homeless people a scripture. If you don't work, you don't eat. You don't do that, do you? So why do you do it with other people? Hey, that's a double standard. It doesn't matter what circumstance they own, right? If you're gay, if you're homeless and gay, I don't tell you about homosexuality. So it's only applies to the people that's doing pretty good. <laughs> you tell the homeless man that's gay the same thing you tell the rich man that's gay. You have the same standard for the homeless man that you have for everybody else. When the homeless man ain't working, you don't say you don't say you don't, if you don't work you don't eat. You don't tell him that you wouldn't dare tell him that. And you got double standards, but you go tell somebody else that that ain't homeless. But you feed homeless people that's not working all the time, specifically and only in most cases. <laughs> people that's not working, you only give them food. You see that part? They'll say you don't work, you don't eat. But then with people that don't work, they only give them food. <laughs> I can't make this up, man. I can't make this up. See, you need to understand the scriptures. You need to understand the scriptures and and the real fruit of the spirit. Stop all this extreme fruit inspecting that you learn that's mixed with prison mentality and street mentality and hood politics. Christianity meets hood politics. That's how it is in the black community. Oh, you got a little dash of that hood, that hood politics stuff going on in the congregation. You don't think nobody know about it. Well, how, why do people, why they energy like they in the streets? When you, like, I've been around street people. When you watching me with that extra look and you watching my body language, like, I don't know. You watching my every move like we in the streets. Because in actuality, the black culture and the hood culture is influencing a lot of these black churches. They ain't totally got the, the culture out of them. So when you come in there, you can feel it. You can feel that energy, man, that vibe where somebody's try, testing you or trying you. You know what I'm saying? And that's why a lot of men, maybe that's one of the reasons why a lot of men don't go to church. Because it feels like you're in an interrogation room. People all in your face. You might, y'all got to be very careful about that. You know, I know you want to get people uh, saved. And I know you want to get people uh, to join your church, but sometimes you got to let a person rock and just get the message, fall back a little bit. If you see them again, then say something, because you got to get them to be consistent on their own anyway. Listen, you got to find, they got to be consistent on their own anyway, right or wrong. So they got to be consistent on their own anyway. So when you see them about the second or third time, that's when you can say, hey, yeah, we seen you here again. That's a good conversation piece. Yeah, you're here again. But as soon as we come in, you all in our face. And some people just be like, I mean, I know you're trying to be friendly, but you got to remember somebody, most people coming into the church, they sick. They down. It's like coming into a hospital ER. They depressed. They, they got all kind of stuff going on. You don't know what they did the other night. And here you are all in their face. They feel like they, they're uncomfortable. If they crying, here you are coming, rubbing them on, rubbing on their back. Like, I mean, I know I'm, I just got to be 100. Some people just want a breather. They just want a little room to cry it out. You know, get their Angie Stone on. I'm going to cry it out. There's no more rain. In this cloud. You know, they're trying to get the Angie Stone on. Trying to cry it out. Trying to get the rain out the cloud. You let me down. You. You. They're trying to get, you know, the Angie Stone on. And then here you come. 
rubbing them all on the back, halfway arousing them, you rubbing so deep they're getting turned on. I can't make this up. You rubbing a little too deeply. You giving a massage. <laughs> you in the church get you 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 a, a, a usher masseuse. <clears throat> you a congregation masseuse. You rubbing them all in the back. Now they're getting turned on a little bit. Now they feel a little guilty and bad and dirty. They feel all dirty all over again. They see a beautiful woman rubbing them all on their back. And now they having all kinds of other thoughts. So you got to remember they halfway in the flesh. You need, you need a little room. They got a little monster left in them. They got a little freak. They still got a little freak in them. You come rubbing them all on the back and everything. Now they looking at you. Now, now, now they back to thinking how they was. Boom, Al. That's what I'm trying to show you. That's what I'm trying to show you. You know what I'm saying? Go, go in the church. Let them, let them give them room. Give them room. It's a sensitive situation. Look at it that way. And see, you don't think I know how to save souls. And see, I just showed you everything right there. It's a sensitive situation. You got to back up a little bit. You know what I mean? You got to back up a little bit. You see somebody coming in, you know what I'm saying? And, if, and, and, you know, don't try to be, don't, don't try to, don't try to do no theatrics. You see them falling and crying and you coming over there hugging them. And the, I mean, some of y'all are acting. Some of y'all want praise for being that person that was rubbing them and hugging on them. That's your way of making you feel good. Yeah, I was there for that person. Was you really? Or was you turning them on a little bit? <laughs> I'm just being 100. They come in hangover from the club or wherever they came from. They halfway buzzing still a little bit. You need to get somebody room like that. Okay, they, they look they look like they just, you know, you got to figure that out. Okay, I see where they at. They might still be buzzing a little bit. Might still be a little high. Might be freshly high. I don't know. Okay, I'm chill on that one. I'm going to let him rock. I'm going to let her rock. But you know what you do? You go over there rubbing on their back and stuff, and they and they buzzing off weed and pills and stuff. <laughs> now they getting turned on. Oh man, <laughs> they already taking ecstasy. Now they oh man. <laughs> now you might wind up having it in, in, in other churches. They build a bond, and now they wind up sleeping together. Boom. <laughs> don't you remember you was there for me? Hey, won't you come over for a picnic? We're going to have a picnic. Little you know you the picnic. <laughs> with the blanket. Ow. <laughs> hey, with the blanket. <laughs> you the picnic with the blanket. Look, when it comes to these fruit of the spirit and all of that, man, I believe I believe in that. I believe I believe in displaying them and everything. I believe in that, right? But you can't go around snatching people's chains off. You know what I'm saying? Like as if they got a cross on and you you ain't got no fruit of spirit. <laughs> Snatch the person's chain off. That's what you try. That's what it's like. You ain't no Christian. <laughs> Snatch the person's chain off. Okay. We got to start being more sensitive. As far as identity versus fruit of the spirit, if somebody received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that he rose from the dead, believe he rose from the dead and sits on the right hand of the father. We don't have no business trying to take that. It's a personal relationship with Jesus. We don't have no room. Who are you to take that? Only God can take it. And I'm going to tell you, when God takes it from somebody, it, it, listen, let me put it like this. If they're not a Christian and they ain't got God in their life, oh, you're going to know. You will know. Hey. You will know. You will know, buddy. You don't need, you don't, you don't need nobody. Listen. You don't need nobody. Uh, 
as a Christian, you you shouldn't need no you don't need two or three people to tell you, oh well, I don't know if that's a Christian. You will know. Hey. Okay. So stop trying to snatch chains, man. Stop trying to ch- snatch chains. If somebody a Christian, let them be. Let them be, man. Let them be. Work on yourself. The Bible says work on your own salvation. Okay? Don't, 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 don't think you and, and don't try to identify what I'm doing as doing what you're doing. I'm listen, I'm not judging nobody. I am the prophet of God coming to say, thus said the Lord. Okay, not me. I'm not coming in my own strength. I'm not coming talking about what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the word of God. I'm talking about what God is leading me to say as a prophet. See, a prophet moves in the prophetic anointing. And I'm going to tell you something about the prophetic anointing. It ain't all about talking about these uh, cars and Bentleys and, 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 you know what I'm saying, double R's and all of that. And, and roadsters and all of that. You know, bird, robin blue, egg blue, roasters. It ain't about all of that. And I'm not saying you can't have it, but the prophetic anointing is also about what God is saying currently. It releases what God is saying currently to the world. And we see how high ranking you are about what you're talking about. You got major prophets. You got people that talk about international things. You got people that think talk that prophesy according to communities. It's nothing wrong with them. It's nothing wrong with that. But then you have prophetic anointings, and I need to do a video about this because through the prophetic anointing, you're able to see the ranking. If you have somebody that's talking about these politics and the governments and 43 states of child marriage, don't stop that prophetic anointing because you're not that caliber of prophet. Good God, boy, that's good. Thank you, my good God. Hallelujah. Well, I am a servant too. Don't try to stop that prophetic anointing outing these these higher levels. And you say, well, I wouldn't be talking about that. Well, maybe your prophetic anointing is not that rank. Maybe you're not that caliber of prophetic anointing. When you look at people like Martin Luther King Jr., some would say he was a prophet because he flowed in higher levels concerning all this stuff that was going on. Same thing with Louis Farrakhan and same thing with uh, with Malcolm X. See, what you have to realize is in your American community, All you've done is kill your prophets. That's all you've done. That's all America has done. And see, I I personally think Tupac might have been a prophet. Because it's the stuff that he was talking about. He was talking about Donald Trump back then. And see, y'all thought, keep it 100, half of y'all thought Tupac might have been bipolar. Yeah, he won. He, yeah, Tupac was cool, but he was he, he probably was bipolar. Look at him. Look how wild he was. Look how he was. Half of y'all think that. Come on. Oh, you don't think that? That's not that's not disrespecting the person. That's being 100. You thought, oh, you listen to Tupac. You thought, oh, Tupac bipolar, man. That's all day. Tupac got some mental sickness of some type. That's what y'all thought. Y'all thought he was either schizophrenic, paranoid, or bipolar or something. And no matter what the case may be, this man spoke and spoke in honesty. He said, you know, it's the white, it, they say it's the white man I should fear, but it's my own kind doing all the killing here. That's honesty. That's the honesty. I, that's the honesty of prophets. They don't look at race, even if it's their own. And you know how I know? He probably was because his mom was a black panther. He could have been totally pro-black. Why he wasn't totally pro-black? He said, it's the white, they say it's the white man I should fear, but it's my own kind doing all the killing here. Because when you have the prophetic gift, you're going to say 
It doesn't matter if it's your own race. It don't matter how you was raised. You're going to say what's real. How I know you're a prophet, you're saying everything 100. And it, you could be black as they come, and you're still saying what's 100. Boosie, Boosie might be a, a prophet. Boosie might be a prophet. I'm going to go through, I might go through and do a video where I talk about all the the the, the, uh, the, the artists that may be prophets, but they just, they didn't go into it. Because see, that's what you got to understand. All prophets don't make it on this side where I'm at. That's why you should be happy. They don't make it this far because they got too much darkness in their life. DMX, he probably was a prophet. You could just tell how he his 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 his, urge, his desire for prayer. He probably was designed as a prophet. But Boosie, the reason why I say Boosie, he's always one hundred. And one thing Boosie said was uh, that all the that, uh, black people is the worst the, the worst race of people. Right? He, he said it's the worst race of people. Right. Now, that being said, he says it's the worst race of people. Now, is he it, 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 he based that on the killing? Now, listen, hear me out. Hear me out. He based that on the killing. He based that on the killing that they do that, that we doing. Right? Not just because of something else. And this man is not a preacher. This man is just being honest. He's a rapper. He should be talking about music and everything. Why are you talking about that? Because he's probably a prophet. You know what else he said that made me think that? He said, we got to pay out of nowhere. About like, what, four or five months ago, maybe six months ago. He said, we, we meaning the, the American community, we got to pay for our sins for what we've done. God going to make us pay for our sins. Boosie letting y'all know all that stuff y'all got, all that politicking y'all got against me and the likes of me, y'all got to pay for that. See, that's what a prophet is going to tell you. They, What I'm telling you, what am I doing any different? I'm telling you the same thing. You're going to have to pay when you're playing with God's people. You're going to have to play when you, you're going to have to pay when you're overly wicked. And you think we out here bipolar. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's the prophetic gift. And because you real chill and they done taught you how to be a slave, they done perfected your slave mentality. As soon as you hear somebody like me talking five, five o'clock, two or three o'clock in the morning, you think I'm off. You think I'm slow. You don't think you think I'm mentally challenged. You think I done lost my mind or something. Uh-huh. I'm on a higher level. That's why anything I go through and be like, I already know I tell myself that's my level. Boom, out. That's my level. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me totally, but it's my level. It's my level. So when you come on the higher levels, you don't got no reference points. So you got to start telling yourself that's my level. <laughs> yeah, see, that's I got to do. I got to do a message on that because see, see, some of y'all don't have no reference points. You don't got up so high in the spirit. You ain't got no reference point. And you can't question your sanity right there. Now you get to a place where now you okay. You can't question your you can't question your sanity now because you don't got no reference points. You don't got nobody to point it out to you. So I'm gonna start pointing out all this stuff. That's why I've already started. Because I'm helping the prophets and the prophetesses maintain their sanity. Yeah, because some of these preachers, you don't want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about all this psychological war they send into people's brains, sending in these witches and warlocks. And, 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 and besides them, also the satanic kingdom sending all kind of images of, of, of children and sending all kind of images of peop, uh, of lust and filth all to people's minds. You don't want to talk about it because you don't want nobody to think that that identifies with you. I know what they're doing. I know exactly what they're doing. And I know the difference between me and, and the, the forces that's around me. So you know what Sun Tzu taught in the art of war? Know thyself and know thy enemy. So when you clash, 
you already you've been in the woods with yourself in the rain and you know yourself back and forth like a good gadget. You know your brain, you should know your game, your your brain like a good gadget. Flip it around, you know how your mind thinks, this, that, and the third. You know your weaknesses, you know your desires, you know your likes and dislikes. Boom, you're flipping it around in your hand. So then when the enemy comes with this crazy stuff of uh, images of pedophilia and images of children and all this weird stuff he's sending you, celebrities' children to your mind and all kinds of crazy stuff, you know it's not you. You know, you, 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 you got your mind understood to yourself like a gadget. So you know the contrast of your thoughts and you know it's not you. Okay? See, so it's a lot of prophets out here that's in the world. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a video on that. I'm gonna do a video on that. People sitting around and crazy bone, I think for Bone Thugs and Harmony, he's another one too. Crazy Bone got a got a, a whole a whole podcast talking about the word of God, man. And see, what I'm trying to show you is, is when you even when you in sin or you're not living a Christian life, these people still have a prophetic design and it still comes out. So now he's still doing he's doing a, a, a podcast talking about the word of God, breaking it down and everything like a preacher. Because that's who he is. You don't just do that. You don't just wake up and go hop on a podcast talking about the Bible. Like, like a preacher. Because that's your design. And, not, and you have to have people to show you your calling. And see, some people, some preachers, they ain't got the eyes to see and the ears to hear. So they sit up and judge you. Oh, well, you know, I keep it 100 now. When it comes to religion, I want to know, are you a Christian? Are you a Jehovah Witness? Okay, I, I don't apologize for, for being 100 like that. Because we got to know, we got to be 100 about receiving Jesus. What he did on the cross, lest we be an antichrist spirit before the antichrist will come. We can't be an antichrist spirit. We cannot oppose Jesus Christ in his true way because some would say any opposition to the true way is the antichrist. Any spirit that does not line up with Christ is a antichrist spirit that is ushering in the way for the antichrist himself. Okay? Now I'm not saying that's what he's doing. I think that 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 Crazy Bone probably has a prophetic gift too. He's probably a prophet too. Because when you are a certain design and that's what God has made you, I don't care what you do and where you go, I don't care how much what of of I don't care how much of it that you do. Your real prophetic design is going to come out. Look at DMX. This, he's supposed to be cutting the album. This man got prayers on a street album. You don't see that contrast? You don't see the contrast, bro. And that's no disrespect. You don't see the contrast. That's because he was a prophetic. He was a prophet. He probably was a prophet because how you get a how you do a street album, bro? Come on, B one hundred. How you do a street album and then you got a prayer on it? A prayer, bro. C come on, man, think about it. Okay, you, it's cool to do it like in public and stuff, but you are gonna put it on the album? That's because he has the prophetic. He was a prophet, and that's why he went through all the bouts. That's why I gotta do a video on it. That that it describes why he went through all the bouts, all the stuff that he went through. All that, and y'all didn't understand it, and y'all was judging and everything. That's why I tell you, don't judge the preacher. You don't know what warfare we go through. You sitting up and judging, and, and listen, man, especially you know the ones, you know the type in our community. You sit back and say, oh, you think you got a cane and say, that's righteous. He's righteous. Stop the acting, bro. You ain't even on this level to know what I'm doing. You ain't, even on, you ain't even on this spiritual level to know what's going on. 
You don't. You don't. So you sitting up and judging and don't understand what spiritual warfare I go through. You don't know. So until you're on this level, until I feel that you're on this level, then I'm not listening to nothing and nobody would. I ain't listening to none of what they say because I know they don't have the capacity to understand this level that we own. That's why DMX was always talking about all the stuff that was going like back and forth, the darkness in the world, the devil, God, and everything in the war in between. You Man, come on, man. Ain't no way in the world a street guy with no prophetic gift is going to be doing that. Same thing with Tupac. Always talking about God. Out here in California, man, making music and everything. Man, come on. Out there smoking weed, high, all out in the sun in California, making songs about God. And Suge Knight probably ain't even like the songs about God. He probably didn't. I, 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 I even say that Suge Knight might have said something about it. Man, you know all that stuff about God, man, you know. You know, I understand, man, but you know, you ain't got to make no song. You know, you a whole song about it, man. You know, you making gospel songs a little. You making gospel tracks, man. Can't you imagine a California person telling you that? Man, you making gospel tracks, man. You might as well cut a gospel out of them, man. You know, we trying to make, man, listen, man. We Listen, we ain't trying to leave no room to be misinterpreted. That's how a street man going to tell you. All right, well, listen, we ain't leaving no room for misinterpretation. You know, they think we we ushering, we ushers at the church over here, and then we think we going out here like bad street kids, like straight, bad church kids. They're going to think you a bad church kid at best. <laughs> They're going to think you're a bad PK kid. They're going to think you're a bad PK. Now, I'm just speculating on that. But look at all the songs that Tupac did. Look at all of that. Look at all the songs he did, bro. Talk about God. Only God can judge me. You know, he know he failed. He going to hell. He know he, he knows his destiny is hell. Baptizing the eternal fire. Man, come on, man. See what you what you what you didn't realize is God makes prophets and they can and, and, and they and he or she can go anywhere they want. Right? And 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 you're and you're one track minded if you think all of them end up in the church house. All the prophets end in a perfect world. In a perfect world, but Satan, the satanic kingdom is real, bro. And his best desire, one of his best desires is to get the prophets over here on the the dark side. They're going to still have influence. They still, it's almost a satanic Luciferian thing where Lucifer turned into Satan. It's the same thing. Okay, I can get these prophets over here. Now they're doing stuff for me. And also in music, like I was, like Satan was. You see what I'm saying? And so you got to understand a lot of these people was prophets. You can't take a design. You can't take something that what God got and what God has made. You can't take with something that God, I want to say it this way. You can't take the identity of something that God has designed. Okay. Tupac should have been, should have been, a political, a, a probably somebody, somebody that uh, was like a Malcolm X or a Martin Luther King Jr. Because he talked on high. If you listen to what he talked about, he talked on high levels of of presidents. He talked on high levels of, um, of 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 community and what we need to do in the community. And people just thought he was just talking. That's how y'all took it. Oh, he just talking. Half, come on, me included. You just listen, but you didn't really peep it. You didn't really peep it. That was the plan. That was the plan for him to be able to give solutions for the community. That's the seventh hour. And that's why, and you how you and how you know you ain't you got a prophet. You want me to tell you how you know? You want me to tell you how you know? Ask me how I know. I want you to ask me how I know. Because you can't replace them. You still ain't replaced Tupac, have you? 
You'll never replace DMX. You're not going to replace them. And that's and once you they're a gift to us. And once you lose them, you're not going to get another one. Because of how ranking, how how rank how high ranking Michael Jackson was, whether he was a prophet or not, because of how high ranking he was in the musical realm, the satanic kingdom was definitely fighting against him. He was the equivalent of a king. And any king is going to go through spiritual warfare. That's the seventh hour. Hey, I don't care what kind of king you are. If you are a king or, or, a, or some type of queen, you're going to go through high levels of spiritual warfare, even if you're a natural king, because sat the satanic kingdom wants to utilize your power. They want to utilize your power. So if you're a president or you are someone in power, the satanic kingdom is going to come to you. It's going the, the satanic kingdom is going to come to you because they want to utilize your power. So either way it goes, if we high, if we're high ranking, we're going you're going to be dealing with spiritual warfare. That's why many people that are high ranking, what they wind up doing is getting on drugs, having excessive sex and eating excessively. That's what it is what's going to happen. They're going to have excessive sex, eat excessively, do all type of drugs because you're high ranking and spirits are constantly warring to utilize you. OK, that's why we are all going through it. Some are, are casualties and some are not. But once you're high ranking in any form or fashion, ask these presidents. They probably hear voices and everything. Ask these presidents and leaders. They probably hear voices and everything. You say schizophrenic. No, they're high ranking. You got some people that do hear voices. And you have some people that's high ranking. And it's, and it's time to stop chalking off people as, as mentally sick when they're very high ranking. Yeah, I got to do a video on that too. That's a seven hour. Yeah, you, yeah you, think, you think people off, but in actuality, actuality. That person is spiritually high ranking. See, Michael Jackson, people judge him on what he did with the kids, but in actuality, Satan had came and, and, and looked and crafted a plan to assassinate his character. Because, see, what you, what you need to realize, see, even though Michael Jackson was not no preacher, he was, he was the most highest ranking entertainer that broke racial boundaries and there was a lot of racist people that you may have not considered that did not like Michael Jackson because he was he was he was the best first of all and he was black second of all both of all okay both of all OK. So what you need to understand is. All that stuff that he was going through with them kids, that was nothing but the satanic kingdom. Trying to usurp, trying to pull down his power because of the influence he had over the world as a black man. That's my I know how these spirits operate. I know how these spirits operate and I know what they're mad at. If you show me your life, I can tell you what they're mad at. I can, you can, if you show me your life and show me what you're doing and show me everything in your life, I can show you what they're mad about. What these spirits are mad about, right? Okay? In the case of Michael Jackson, you overlook that he was the greatest, most influential black entertainer of all time still is white girls and white people they ain't like that hollering all over they ain't like that they did not these racist people didn't like that and so their energy combined with the satanic kingdom which is racist see sa satan is racist satan is everything that you do not like satan is a pedophile satan is racist satan is everything that you do not like 
Satan is everything that you do despise. Okay? He isn't some cool, straight guy. He's gay. He's everything. Satan is not some cool, gay guy, straight guy like you, 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 some of you gangsters try to emulate him. He's gay as well. He's a pedophile as well. So, Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson had to go through all of that because of the influence that he had over the community. That's what happened. And so them forces fought against him. And they seen his love for children. Hear this part. And they defiled it. They corrupted it. And they made him make childish, silly decisions. And they played on the fact that he didn't have a childhood. See, the devil gets into your wiring. He had a heart for children. He worked on that. Bring some children around. And he thought like a child himself because he never had a childhood. So he was always trying to make up for it. Subconsciously, he was always trying to live out what he felt like he missed. And really just experiencing what he missed. Right? That's why you didn't really see him in no mature settings. And so the, the devil seen that and crafted that together. Yeah, he's like almost a man child. No disrespect. He's almost like a man child. Like kids now that got the different mental sicknesses and stuff. That's how Michael Jackson did. Satan might have seen. Some people might have seen this Michael Jackson ass. Even though he was good at what he did himself personally, some people would may have considered him a special needs person. I know you don't want to hear it. I'm not listen. I'm not character. Listen, I'm not character assassinated. Some people might have seen Michael as special needs. Think about it. Now you see what I, now you see what I see. Got a great talent. But, but watch how his personality was. You ain't seen him with no women. And he took over the world. That's what you that's how you know he was almost special needs right there. He's he's literally the greatest artist of all times and everywhere could have any type of woman he wanted. Like ordering the pizza. He could have had any type of woman he wanted. And I'm sure he's seen beautiful women that he esteemed as beautiful. How come he didn't take one? And make them their, his wife. How come he didn't do that? How come he didn't get stuck on somebody? Huh? All them women? Come on, man. You can't be serious. He going back and forth from California to New York and all them beautiful women. Man, you can't be serious, bro. You going to get hung up on somebody. Are you kidding me? Back and forth to California, New York alone. Not to mention when he went down, when he going down south too somewhere. Man, come on, bro. All them voluptuous women down south somewhere. Man, come on, bro. You got to be, man, come on. You can't be serious, bro. You can't be serious. And he don't pick nobody out of that. That's almost special needs. And Satan, Satan played on that. He played on that. And crafted what you thought was a pedophile. And really, he was almost borderline special need, didn't have a childhood, trying to make up for it, didn't have a heart for children. So Satan crafted all that together, made a big pedophile burger. And that's what y'all thought it was. And all it was was manipulation of the satanic kingdom. See, that's why you got to pay attention. The, the satanic kingdom be manipulating. And sometimes people are special needs. Sometimes people are prophets of God like me. Sometimes and you and you and you looking at you looking at it how you looking at it. You looking at it how you looking at it. Not considering the spiritual warfare they're going through, including Michael Jackson. All that he was going through. You didn't consider all of that what he was going through. Knowing that he dealt with the satanic kingdom. Oh, I know he did. 
He was too influential. Satan want to Satan want to be able to get his words out there through his music and through his through his his his, his career. Of course. Of course, they ain't going to tell the world that, but of course they dealt with the satanic kingdom because you're too high ranking. I already know. I don't got to know you. You're too high ranking. You, I know you're going through something. I know you're going through an attack and an onslaught from the satanic kingdom because you're too high ranking not to. If you're the president and you're telling me you don't go through no satanic warfare, you're lying. You don't want people to think that you're crazy because I know that the satanic kingdom comes to power. The satanic kingdom does not deal with people that don't have nothing. When people say the Satan is on that man and he's running around a, a, a river, you saying Satan is on some guy that's out, outside somewhere, some woman that's outside. Come on, man. Nah. Satan goes and looks for power in the earth and he wants to get his, his ways done in the earth through that power. So, so he comes to everybody, especially the American kingdom. If you're a president, if you've ever been a president in the satanic king, in, in American kingdom, I guarantee you the satanic kingdom came to you. Same thing with Donald Trump. I know that. I know he came to me. But you failed. You failed. That's what it was. You failed. Okay? These people out here that's, like in, that's checking for fruit, 